Hello once again, Aaronette. It's me, Carmen, coming right back at you with Fancy Show Tech. I have my friend Vincent Maggart here. Say hello, wonderful people, Vincent. Hello, everybody. It's Vincent. How's it going, folks? Uh, glad to hear from you, Vincent. Glad to hear from you. Vincent makes YouTube videos over at youtube.com forward slash Vincent Maggart. There will be a link in the description. But without further ado, let's get into the topic of this video, Open Broadcaster Software. What I'm running is Open Broadcaster Software Studio. That's the latest version of OBS. There used to be a classic edition, but this is a little more featured, uh, polished, I guess. Would you say that? I would say it's more featured and polished. And being that both of them is open source, I have personally inspected the source code. Uh, and I can say that I, from what I've seen in the studio version, seems like that they really did a good rewrite and just made it a lot more reliable from what I can tell. And in my experience using it, I've seen the same thing. Well, I, guess it's I think good. the main use for OBS, like if you're doing gaming, streaming, or basic live stream, it does the job pretty well. OBS is cross-platform. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. All three platforms you can get OBS. Most games I haven't had any issues with. So basically I'm doing a basic overview of OBS how to stream with it, get everything set up, and whatnot, sharing my experiences. So you can see right here I have my desktop capturing. This is the main OBS control window. You have your scenes in the left corner here, your sources, which right now I have a display capture and a webcam. And I have the mixer, although I'm actually using Voice Meter Banana. This video is mainly about OBS. It's not really about Voice Meter Banana, but if you guys want to check it out, there'll be a link in the description. And I might do a video on that in the future, so let me know what you think in the comments below. So you have the mixer here, which is for audio, and like I was saying, I'm not using that right now. That's kind of irrelevant, but you can notice I have uh, the mic set to Voice Meter Output. And of course, to the right here, you have your scene transition, start streaming, start recording. Actually, it says stop recording right now because I'm also screen capturing a OBS. And you have studio mode, which kind of lets you switch. Oh, I love between. the studio mode. It lets the you switch between different sources. Yep, the studio mode is absolutely wonderful. That's my favorite feature about OBS because it reminds me of Cam Twist for the Mac. If any of you guys have ever heard of that, it's it's kind of like that because if you have Cam Twist Studio Mode on, it looks very similar to Cam Twist. Yeah, it's kind of like that, you could say, but it's a little different. It, it, it's a, it's like a slimmed down, more simple version of the studio version of Cam Twist. That's what I would say. Yeah, definitely. Like Cam Twist, though, is more of, what's the word for it? It's more professional. Like you have, you have it laid out kind of like a switching board. You have all your different sources. But anyways, so you're setting up your first stream. You're getting ready to go. You see. OBS will probably look blank. You won't have all these different sources here. So to add a source, you just go down to the bottom. And like for the webcam, you can select video capture device, display capture. But let's say you're doing a game. So I'll open up Minecraft just because that's why I usually play. And that's, I think, what most people are going to be... Like, not Minecraft in particular, but that's just a good... Isn't Minecraft OpenGL? I believe Minecraft is OpenGL. I'm not actually sure. I, I don't know, but it's a good example for capturing a game on OBS. It seems to run pretty well with OBS, and I'm not on a very high-spec system. It's like a first-generation i5, uh, NVIDIA Quadro 600. So as long as you have some sort of dedicated graphics and a decent processor, you could pretty much capture Minecraft on any, uh, any system. So now I have Minecraft open. Just for demonstration purposes here, I'm going to add a game capture. So I go down to the bottom left corner right here, press the plus button, and I want to add a game capture. So you see this dialog box. I can call it whatever I want. I'm just going to call it game capture and mode capture any full screen application. That works good like if you're screen capping a game that is full screen, but since we're in a window, I'm going to capture a specific window. And you can see here, you can choose between different windows, but I'm going to choose Minecraft 1.11. Uh, there's nothing else to really see here. I guess I could, like, maximize it, so... Now Minecraft is taking up the whole screen. And I can also show the resizing capabilities in OBS. So I can just, uh, resize it right so it fits the window. Actually, I'll right-click, transform, fit screen. You couldn't really see what I was doing there. But as you can see now, just for demonstration purposes, I'll connect to a server so you can see the performance. Might be a little degraded though because I have a couple different things running at the same time. But I can usually stream pretty well. 
This server seems to be lagging a little bit. Maybe because I have TeamViewer and OBS open at the same time. Normally you'd be getting a little higher frame rates, but considering I'm capturing my desktop three times, I think it's doing pretty good. This is just a demonstration anyways. So you can see I have the game capturing, and basically the game capture mode is what you'll want to use if you're capturing a game. Because that's specially designed to actually capture the game and not just the display. Of course I'm using display mode because I'm screen capturing, but I can cancel out of that now. And change it back from game capture. So now that we've got our sources pretty much out of the way, the only other thing I can say is that to change like the priority of where sources are set on the display like if I want the webcam to be behind the display capture I can drag it like that up and down whatever's at the top is at the forefront of the screen and then it's pretty much ranked like that from top down of course you can make new scenes for having different combinations of sources so now you've got your stream set up pretty much you might want to change the audio settings that will be file settings and under audio, I have it set mic slash auxiliary audio device, voice meter output. There is a desktop capture mode in OBS. I don't really use that, but you can use that. It works pretty well. I just don't use it because I like to have more control over the audio. I actually have used the desktop capture built in before. It actually is pretty good, but I agree with you. I think voice meter or something like that is better just to have more control. Right. And of course you can set the video. I can't really change these settings right now because I am recording. What I try to do is keep the base resolution and the output the same because basically it's scaling down, right? Like it'll be capturing your display. And I noticed by default, it'll like to set this base setting to your display resolution. But I like to turn that down to actually what the output resolution is. In theory, I feel like it saves in a certain way, but also it keeps everything consistent and you're not scaling down video. You scaling down the desktop, of course, when you're putting it in to capture it in OBS itself, but it's not like the base resolution is what it's actually like what the video is actually at originally, and then your output resolution is just scaling it down. So, like I said, I tend to keep those values the same. You can do something different if you want. I set my FPS to 30 for NTSC. You could set it to 60 if you want if you're doing like a more like a game that people really want to see the speed of movement there but you don't have to set the 60 I keep it at 30 for lower CPU usage I actually prefer to look at video even just someone standing there talking at 60 frames per second it just looks so much more vivid but uh, he is correct that the more frames you're capturing the more CPU usage you use and I can say when I'm using OBS I usually capture 60 frames a second but it's really hard on the CPU compared to if it's 30 frames so just keep that in mind Oh, definitely, yeah. And you have the output right here. And these are your encoding settings. So you have your encoder H.264. That's what you'll be using on most streaming platforms. So I wouldn't really change that. You have bit rate control. You have constant bit rate and all the different settings here. I usually just keep it at constant bit rate. Some people like some people like VBR, variable bit rate. I, I personally, with you, constant bit rate's better. Just lock it to something. And the bitrate I use is 2500. I found that's pretty good for 720p, which is what I usually stream at. For streaming, you don't really need anything higher than that. Some people stream at 1080. I just stream at 720. That works for me. Well, I don't even think a lot of people have a connection that's capable of streaming a good solid 1080p or receiving a good solid 1080p stream anyway. Well, I mean, like, most streaming providers let you do it in levels nowadays. Like, Twitch does, YouTube does, where you can say, like... That, that's true. They, they transcode it on the fly for you. Like, where you don't want to watch it at 720p. Like, you just want to watch it at 480p or whatever. So, I don't think yeah, that's you, as you, much they, of an can, issue. But. It's not as much of an issue as it used to be. But used to, I'm sure you remember this too, if you sent them 720, that was the only thing people could watch because they wouldn't transcode it. Right. And pretty much the bit rate, like, I'll set that, like, if it was 1080p, I'd probably do about double, like, maybe 5,000 or 4,000, depending on your connection. I have about 5 megabits down, and about, a megabit is about 1,000 kilobits, 1,024. You, you, you mean you mean 5 megabits up? You said 5 megabits down. 5 megabits up, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. It happens five to, it happens to the best of us. It, yeah, it, it does to happen the to the best of, best of us. So you have your bit rate here. 
So that's about 2.5 megabits I'm estimating here. It's probably a little more than that because it's not exactly 1,000 kilobits to a megabit. You have a recording tab. If you set the encoder the same as encoder, it will encode at the settings you have set here. I have them set higher here because I'm screen capturing. And this is your audio bit rate. I just keep that about the same. One thing I'll say for YouTube though is that you do need to set your keyframe interval to about 2 seconds. Because if you do it any higher than that, YouTube will complain. Twitch doesn't really care, so I just keep it at auto usually. Like, I don't really notice a difference there. I usually keep it about very fast. Like, I feel like that works well for most applications. It just means you can get more quality out of your stream. But if you set maybe, it maybe that's lower, Maybe that's what I have it set to. Now you, you got me wondering. I'm going to go check this real quick. I forgot what I have it set, set to. If you set it lower, I know it uses less... It uses less, like... It uses more CPU, but, like, you get more... It produces for, a higher quality video yeah, feed, right? Yeah, you get a higher quality video feed for your bits. Yeah, it, it's more crisp. But, like, like I said, you can compensate for that by raising the bit rate, too. So, at the same time, not everyone has a bunch of bandwidth to spare. And next that, but not yeah, least, true. you have your stream setting right here. You can by, see by the way, I take it back. I, I actually have mine set to very fast. I just checked. So next in the stream settings, you have all these different services you can choose from Twitch, YouTube, uh, Daily Motion, Facebook Live. Does anyone even use Daily Motion anymore? <laughs> okay, but you show. And, and don't forget the other thing. Don't forget the other thing you should tell them about is that there's custom streaming too. So you're able to put in a RTP stream, Hugo's custom streaming server. That is true. You do have the custom streaming server, which I'm not really going to cover, but you can do that if you have your own streaming server. I guess you have a bunch of money. I, I I have I have a test streaming server that I'll use to test OBS with, but when I'm actually going to stream to the public, I don't use that because it's like I don't have enough bandwidth here to serve hundreds of connections. There are certain <laughs> services that aren't shown unless you check the show all services box. There's these are some really obscure streaming services actually. Most of these I've never even heard of, but I guess if you stream using uh, Game RU, whatever that is. Good game .ru, then you can Or Good Game RU, yeah, there you go. Then you can check that box. I'm going to uncheck it because only things I usually ever use is Twitch or YouTube. Maybe Facebook Live in the future. I haven't used that before, but I know it's possible. And last but not least, the main setting pane you'll want to look at is the general. These are just your main application settings like snap sensitivity that's pretty interesting they have a setting for that language theme of course you have your hotkeys i don't have anything set because i don't really do a lot of like hot switching or anything in obs but i guess if you were you could set these settings and your advanced so these most of these things you don't really i've never even messed with these settings you could set mess with the file name formatting the, the only one of these that I have messed with is where it says bind to IP down there. If you have multiple network cards and you want to bind it to only use one, you can change that. That that comes in handy if you have multiple network cards. Bind to IP. Oh, that is interesting. Say so if you have multiple network you know, interfaces on the computer, you can bind it to use, let's say, the Wi-Fi card or the... In my case, if I stream from a laptop, I always want to bind it to use the, the hardwired connection. And if you're not careful, it will try to use the Wi-Fi if you don't bind it to that. So keep that in yeah. mind. So one last feature I'm going to show is the effects thing. So we'll right-click on this play capture here. If you click on filters, you can add different effects like a, like a crop, chroma key. You have all sorts of different options here. I could do color correct, image mask, crop color correction scaling aspect ratio i could do a scroll color key sharpen and chroma yeah key. Th they don't have that many effects yeah like yeah my, i think obs is kind of like a basic application but for b it doesn't try to like be too much it's very it's it, very it, 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 it knows what well it's for what it is it, yeah it knows what its purpose is and it's not going to try and fill places that it knows there's no way it can fill if you want to download open broadcaster software, you can check it out at obsproject.com. If you want to check out Voice Meter, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. All of these links will be in the description where you can download anything featured on this video. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to do this as a follow-up because I did a my, uh, video about how to stream using Cam Twist on Mac. You can check out those videos. I'll put in some annotations in the video if you guys want to check those out. But this is more on the Windows side, even though OBS is cross-platform. I think most people are going to be doing their gaming on Windows. 
So I figured I would show it on Windows here. And that's what I've been using for streaming. I haven't really been on the Mac side of things for a while. So I figured yeah, I'd do he, a refresher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, uh, he he mainly likes to use Windows for the production as well as me. Me and him both used to be on Mac for production. Now we're both using Windows for production and Linux for pretty much everything else. So, Anyways, you guys, thank you for watching. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you, what do you think of my streaming tutorial? Do you have any questions about OBS? Leave your questions in the comments below and I will respond as quick as possible. And if you guys want to check out my friend Vincent Maggart, his YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Vincent Maggart. He does like uh, EAS stuff, kind of technology all over the place. Do you have anything you want to say about that, Vincent? I'm getting ready to start a series about programming, basic programming. So if you want to learn some of the basics of programming, like if statements, how to import a library, that type of thing, you should totally head over to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Vincent Maggard. And of course, you can check out our social media. All of those links are in the description below. Twitter, Facebook, the whole nine yards. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope all of you have a good one, and peace out, YouTube.